Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Trueni Turbine Limited Q2 F523 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touch tone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Rishabh Barar of CTR India. Thank you, and over to you, Mr. Barar. Thank you. Good day, everyone, and a warm welcome to all of you participating in the Q2 and H1 FY23 earnings conference call of Triveni Turbine Limited. We have with us today on the call Mr. Nikhil Soni, Vice Chairman and Managing Director, Mr. Arun Mote, Executive Director, Mr. Sachin Parab, President, Global Sales Aftermarket, and Ms. Surbhi Channa, Investor Relations and Value Creation, along with other members of the senior management team. Before we begin, I would like to mention that some statements may, in today's discussion may be forward-looking in nature, and a statement to this effect has been included in the invite which was mailed to everybody earlier. I would also like to emphasize that while this call is open to all invitees, it may not be broadcasted or reproduced in any form or manner. We will start this call with opening remarks from the management, following which we will have an interactive question and answer session. I now request Mr. Nikhil Soni to share some perspectives with you with regard to the operations and outlook for the business. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much, Ishab. A very good good afternoon or good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to the Q2 H1 FY23 earnings call for Triveni Turbine Limited. It's my great pleasure to address you today, given the record performance that we've had on a number of parameters, uh, our top line, our EBITDA, our order booking, which all bodes very well for this current year as well as for the year to come. But to get into some details, the performance of the company during the quarter under the review has been very impressive, with the turnover and profitability growing by 41.9% and 53.8% respectively, when comparing to the corresponding quarter of the last year, excluding exceptional income. The company is well on track for a strong multi-year growth trajectory aided by positive momentum in its addressable markets, ably supported by focused business strategy and extremely capable execution. The revenue, as I had said, uh, for the second quarter stood at 2.93 billion rupees, which is a growth of 41.9% and is the highest ever on a quarterly basis. The domestic sales showed an increase of 17% to 1.64 billion, while the export turnover increased by 93% to 1.29 billion, driven by the company's success in international markets in both the below 30 megawatts and the above 30 megawatts segment in the post-pandemic. As a result, the mix of domestic and export sales changed from 56 say changed to 56% and 44% export in Q2 FY23 as compared to 68% domestic, 32% export in Q2 FY22. The product segment turnover was 2.23 billion during the quarter and increase of 48%, and the aftermarket turnover was 700 million rupees during the quarter, a growth of 25% over the previous year. As you could see, aftermarket contributed 24% of total turnover in Q2 FY23 versus 27% in Q2 FY22. EBITDA for the quarter was at 664 million, up 39.2% year on year, with a margin of 22.7%, which is again another record for quarterly performance. PAC for the quarter was at 46 sorry, 463 million, an increase of 53.8% year on year. As I had said, the highest ever quarterly order book was also recorded in this quarter, and which was at 3.61 billion rupees, registering an increase of 18% over the last year. Our record order booking for the half year of 719, sorry, 7.19 billion rupees during H1 was an increase of 23.9%. And now our outstanding Carry forward order book as of 30th September stands at 11.37 billion rupees, an increase of 37.3% .3 
which is again another record for the company. Investments including cash stand at 7.83 billion rupees, an increase of 4.3% from 31st of March 22. On, to talk about more, more about order booking, on the product side, order booking during the quarter was at 2.72 billion rupees, which was higher by 17% when compared with the corresponding period of the previous year. And this is the sixth consecutive quarter of the company clocking over 2 billion rupees in order booking for the product segment. The aftermarket segment also recorded an 18% increase in its order booking to, six, to 886 million rupees in this current quarter. At the half year mark, order booking in H1, as I said, stands at a record 7.19 billion rupees and growing, gr growing a healthy 23.9% over last year. Noticeably, export contribution has increased to 39.5% and order booking for the aftermarket segment has also shown a solid growth of 44.7% over the last year, uh, reaching a record 1.9 billion rupees in the first half. This is all stems felt very favorably for the years to come. But as I will, as I will give you, try to give you confidence in, in during the later part of, of my remarks, H2 seems to be even better. And we are quite optimistic on all performance me metrics of sales, uh, profitability, uh, order booking, which all spells very well for the years to come. The total outstanding order book, as I'd already said, stands at 11.37 billion rupees as on the 30th of September, which is an increase of 37% when compared to the previous year. And the domestic outstanding order book stood at 6.46 billion rupees, and the export outstanding order book stands at 4.91 billion rupees which contributes 43% of the closing order book. In the product segment from, the, from an order booking perspective, we have received a high number of inquiries from the international market. Our growth in international market inquiries have grown by over 50% in this current quarter. At the same time, domestic inquiries, specifically led by a decline in metals and mining segments, in the domestic market have declined by about 19% in the current quarter. But on an overall basis, the, inquire, the entire inquiry book for the Trivedi turbine has grown by over 26% in this current quarter. This is coming from a variety of different segments. Of course, Trivedi turbine is a preeminent supplier of thermal renewable solutions to both independent power producers as well as industry. And we continue to maintain our, both our domestic as well as global leading market positions. In India, of course, we have a dominant market position. Increasingly in the international market, we are making greater headway. Market segments in which they are arriving from include solid municipal waste incineration, in which we have received orders in the higher than 30 megawatt category in this current quarter, which again strengthens our market position as a dominant supplier into this market segment of municipal solid waste incineration globally. This is for an order from uh, West Asia. And we have uh, other successes in this area as well. Uh, we also received orders from Southeast Asia, Europe, and North America in this current quarter, which should give, which gives us confidence in terms of the recovery in these markets as they open up. The requirement stems, like I said, not only from thermal renewable solutions, but also from industrial capex, which is happening in terms of fixed capital formation in a variety of different industries. They seem to be led by process cogeneration and heating requirements for a variety of industries but also in terms of independent power production based on biomass and other renewable fuels. The company also is performing exceedingly well in its API market segments, and that is a market segment that is growing quite rapidly for us. And our developments in this line place us at the forefront of, of technology that is being provided to, uh, to, to our clients in this market segment. We provide both single stage and multi stage designs, which are extremely energy efficient and have an extremely good payback for our customers. On the aftermarket side, the company continues to grow across its three market segments of refurbishment, spares, and service. In the traditional business of energy enhancement and upgrades, have significantly contributed to both the international and domestic market orders. As I had alluded to in our last quarterly call, we have picked up a significant order in uh, the South African uh, development community area for uh, servicing of 
large utility turbines. These are orders which uh, contribute not only a lot to our top line, but also to the capability of the company to then further work with our clients to move up the value chain to get in an increasing number of spares and other higher value or higher margin uh, orders. Uh, these, this order in specific in the half year contributed to approximately 13 odd crores of cost, which was included in other expenses, as you will see. They may, there will be other expenses such as this coming in the future quarters. And while the margin level for these orders is lower than our typical uh, aftermarket segment, um, we as a company, given the growth, operating leverage, uh, mix in export versus domestic, uh, with reduction in material costs, are confident of maintaining margins uh, in the short, medium, and long term for the company. Our focus is on growth. And as I had alluded to in our previous conference call, about a growth of over 35% odd in the current year and next year, we are quite confident given the state where our order book lies to be able to achieve these numbers, if not try to exceed them. Uh, given that fact, given the growth, given the high return metrics of the company, and given the fact that uh, really the company does not have much use of its capital, its cash and bank, the board of directors has decided to do a buyback in this current quarter. And uh, subject to the approval of shareholders, the board has approved a proposal to buy back from equity shareholders of the company up to 5.28571 million equity shares at a price of 350 rupees per equity share for an aggregate amount not exceeding 190 crores through a tender offer on a proportionate basis in accordance with the provisions of SEBI buyback of securities regulation 2018 and the Companies Act 2013. This is, a, this is a request that we received from many shareholders and especially our large and largest uh, mutual fund shareholders in India. We believe that this is a, a good way to return a chunk of money to all shareholders. The performance of the previous buyback that the company did in, 20, in February 2019 had a subscription of over 184% and small shareholders had a, had a subscription of over 2000% in that buyback. So we're quite confident that this will be taken very favorably by shareholders and seen as a means by which the company looks to return capital to shareholders. The promoters will be participating in this uh, buyback as well. Having said that, now our R&D continues to perform exceedingly well. We are focusing on further IP development on all existing product lines in terms of improving uh, blades, blade parts, structural analysis, and other parts of uh, the turbine, while at the same time our developments on future technologies also continues to do very well. We are in the process of piloting certain technologies, and we hope to report soon on some progress in these lines. Uh, with that, uh, I'd be happy to open up for questions and answers. I have uh, uh, our colleagues on the line as well to help assist in any questions you may have. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, to ask a question, you may enter star and one. We will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Kunal Shade from BNK Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, good morning, sir. Uh, congratulations on a very strong set of numbers. Uh, my first question is pertaining to your export market. Uh, while you know we have had an ex exceptional performance in the export market, uh, generally, you know, there has been concerns around, you know, what is happening around the world in terms of uh, uh, slowdown in economic growth. So if you can share your views about what you are hearing from your end market, in, especially in the export side. Okay. Uh, you know, you bring up a very important question because uh, there's two factors to uh, to the market in which the rate turbine operates. And I've, as I've been trying to allude over the last several conference calls, Triveni Turbine provides heat and power solutions to industries, as well as renewable energy-based power solutions to the IPP industry. Uh, so 
very frankly, when we see demand coming from places like Europe, it is coming from a perspective of energy transition, where you have requirements of energy efficiency stemming from industrial processes such as waste heat recovery or other biomass-based ICT plants. The largest segment of growth in markets such as Europe, which is currently under a huge degree of energy crisis as well as a conflict, um, stems from uh, uh, diversifying their energy requirements. So needs such as municipal solid waste incineration, as long as the waste exists, uh, provide an extremely good business case for uh, entrepreneurs or businesses to set up these capacities. The, and as you know, there's ample funding for, from, uh, for these uh, uh, type of plants. Globally, otherwise, you have an enormous amount of growth happening in agro industries. And agro and process industries continue to provide growth for us in, uh, in a variety of different markets, especially Southeast Asia, Central America. The API market, as you know, uh, given the level at which uh, oil and gas prices are at, uh, continues to be quite robust. And we are aiming to in increase our order booking in this segment gradually over uh, a period of time. But it will be it will reflect quite uh, quite well on our uh, overall order booking. So, from the perspective of our traditional market of below 30 megawatts, the 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 international market seems to be doing quite well, and we are very optimistic in the coming quarters to exceed our uh, 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 current performance. And uh, uh, the above 30 megawatt segment also we've had success, and we aim to continue pushing in this market segment. So of course it is more lumpy than the below 30 megawatt segment as you could imagine because uh, of the number of turbine orders that actually do come about. The API market segment also continues to grow. Uh, a factor which will aid our international um, growth considerably is uh, our servicing, is, is, is our focus on servicing internationally and our aftermarket proposition. Uh, I have a president of aftermarket, Sachin, on the line. Sachin, could you give a little bit of indication as to how you see aftermarket growth and especially on the on the on the international side. Uh, so good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm glad to actually uh, bring you up to speed on the. This is the operator. We have lost the connection for Mr. Parab. So uh, you may continue in the meanwhile. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I, I, I'll, I'll get Sachin to to, uh, to answer the, the the question when he gets back. If that answers your question, we can move on to the next question. Unless you have another sure. Uh, uh, sir, uh, in my second question, thank you for such a elaborate, uh, you know, outlook. Uh, my second question is pertaining to the margins. Uh, you made a comment about that you are quite confident about maintaining your margins for this year and current year. Uh, but would you believe uh, they, there are also drivers, uh, you know, within the business that can help you, you know, expand margin going ahead? especially that uh, we are also talking about increased focus on services. Yeah, yeah, I, I think you see the multiple areas where we can improve margins. As I said, operating leverage will allow us to improve margins. The product mix both on the export domestic as well as aftermarket to product will allow us to expand margins. Uh, stability in commodity pricing and the fact that most of our rate contracts will now be renegotiated at lower rates would mean a certain margin expansion. But having said that, we also see expenses along the way. We will be, we have already expanded our workforce by about 15% compared to last year, same period. Uh, we aim to in increase that more significantly going forward to cater to our, uh, uh, our very large growth coming forward. Uh, we also aim to invest into R&D and to future proof ourselves from a technology perspective. But at the end of the day, the fact that we're seeing this amount of growth uh, and we are confident that we have pricing ability in the market. We have to be cognizant that we don't overcharge our customers uh, because we're playing a longer term game here. Uh, so we're confident that we could improve our margins, but uh, why constrain growth at this point in time? Let us run with growth. We, we are, we're confident that we can maintain margins at where we're at. We just uh, I don't think that there's any reason for us to expand margins at this point in time, so rather push for greater growth. Sure, sir. Thank you so much and best of luck for the future quarters. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I would request you to please limit your questions to two per participant. If you have any further questions, you may join the queue back. We have the next question from the line of Amit Anwani from Prabhudas Lilathar Private Limited. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Am I audible? 
Yes. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for taking my question. So my first question is with respect to exports, and you highlighted that we are seeing a strong pipeline in in uh, three, four uh, geographies. So if you could just elaborate more, where are we seeing the you know larger uh, contribution uh, expected to come? Uh, you mentioned about Southeast Asia, Europe, uh, Africa. So if you could just elaborate more. Uh, on which part and which category uh, between like uh, 0 to 30, 30 to 100 megawatt uh, where we are expecting to receive orders? Uh, yeah, um, actually the thing is Triveni Turbine has inquiries from over 110 countries and it has an installed base in over 75 countries. So we're quite diverse as far as this goes. So, but, so when we talk about demand coming from areas like Southeast Asia and Europe and, and and North America, these are very large markets. And uh, of course, it will be spread between countries within them. Our focus as a company and our competitiveness and our market proposition is always strongest in the thermal renewable segment. So of course, a, a considerable amount of our inquiry book and our order book is in this market segment. As you would imagine, this is a market segment that is also growing in the market because that is ultimately what finds uh, adequate funding and leads resistance from uh, uh, climate change uh, uh, supporters. Uh, so, so very frankly, that 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 contributes a lot. Industrial growth by itself would contribute maybe about 35, 40 percent of our of our growth, excluding API markets. Um, so, so, so we are reasonably insulated, but though we play very strongly into the energy transition market. Uh, in the in the in the ranges, of course, our historical market of below 30 megawatts from a number of turbines is always going to contribute far far more significantly than anything above 30 megawatts. But we have made very good headway in this past year since our joint venture with General Electric ended uh, in this market segment, and we can and we aim to continue uh, getting orders both domestically and internationally from this from this market. Uh, as I told you, our recent order of, of municipal solid waste incineration was for an above 30 megawatt market, and so were our orders earlier in this year for waste heat recovery uh, uh, in in the steel sector. So we we have confidence that uh, it's broad based. It's in terms of geographies. It's uh, driven around thermal renewable solutions, either directly for grid dispatchable power or for internal heating requirement. And uh, uh, yeah, I think that's 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 what I can give you right now. Thanks. And with respect to sir inquiries, I think if I heard it right, you mentioned that uh, inquiries have grown by almost 27% for this quarter. But I think there was a decline in inquiries in domestic market. Yeah. So our, our inquiries so I think grew, inquiry uh, yeah. grew by 25%. In, internationally, it grew by 58%. This is what gives us confidence in international order bookings in the coming quarters and year. Uh, domestic market inquiries reduced by 19%, and this was pretty much all driven by uh, uh, the eastern belt of uh, uh, mining uh, metals. And so any outlook? Uh, uh, are we expecting the same in coming yeah, quarter? No. Market, uh, outlook is, is still equally robust. The market itself for the half year uh, in the domestic market uh, was somewhere in excess of uh, 700 plus megawatts. And uh, for, the, for the below 30 megawatt category, we didn't have much of any orders above 30 megawatts. Uh, so, so we're confident that the year-on-year -year growth is there. You know, if we look at order conversions in certain industries, they seem to be uh, uh, very robust, especially in terms of markets such as paper recycling, new markets such as plastic recycling, et cetera, will be picking up as well. You have uh, uh, cement expansions and uh, cement waste heat recovery, which will be coming up quite uh, quite seriously in the coming quarters. So we're very we're, we're very uh, uh, um, positive on the domestic market. As I told you in our previous conference call as well, um, the, the the entire market has a, still a long way to go before it hits its peak for the domestic side. So we think that while we have an upswing in fixed capital formation, it is nowhere near. Uh, any peak in any manner. So we we, we aim to, or we believe that we will continue to see growth in the domestic market in the coming years. For the next two, three years, we should continue to see it. Sure. Well, last question, sir, on the SADC, you mentioned that it uh, contributed around 30 crores to the cost, other expenses. 
and margins typically here are lower so uh, in this uh, large service turbines are we uh, what could be the market for us and are we expecting the margins also you know to improve here in coming quarters and anything in the pipeline here uh, apart from sadc uh, yeah pipeline has orders from there as well and they will be contributing uh, in this financial year as well as next financial year i think sachin is back so i let him speak a little bit more about this but in general the sadc what the reason i i highlighted the cost for the half year which formed a part of other expenses is so that you get an understanding on the published results uh, as to why other expenses gone up so considerably and therefore we will continue to provide notes to our accounts to to give that uh, clarity uh, these it, it, these orders we will aim to improve margins they but it's difficult for these particular orders to come back to general after market margins uh, uh, we think that providing the capability here the market is really get, getting us credentials for the global market for us to provide this as a, a service provider everywhere the market is extremely large extremely extremely large uh, so uh, sachin if you are there can you just provide uh, if you 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 yeah, uh, the specific question was about the sadc market the services market in sadc region is uh, is huge uh, is uh, i don't have a figure to share with you but we have a very very small rather insignificant market share and the reason why we have entered into this strategic services contract is so that we can uh, build credibility create a reference and uh, get into the reckoning in other markets as well so there is a lot of headroom in sadc itself for us to grow in the services region and purely from a service standpoint of manpower supply we are aiming to upgrade ourselves in the value chain and get into more of supplies of parts and upgrades uh, which will actually help us in improving the margins even better so uh, this is uh, just the beginning the foundation being laid uh, in sadc region for the services and we are confident that the reference we create here will help us uh, get new business in other markets the market remains extremely large and you know as i said the market share is very small so tremendous headroom room for us for growth Sachin, why don't you give an indication of your overall aftermarket growth? Uh, so this year we have seen good order booking across uh, the spares, services, and refurbishment uh, domains of the aftermarket business. Uh, the growth has been driven significantly by uh, efficiency enhancement and upgrade projects, and uh, we see that uh, across the, the, the markets. more so in the indian context where we we find that a lot of customers are finding value in getting upgrades done on their turbines uh, we are seeing good traction across asia and in africa uh, for all our revenue streams and uh, the growth this year uh, some of the numbers our vice chairman has already mentioned we are uh, quite uh, hopeful and confident of uh, achieving the same growth numbers in the next year as well so the momentum should continue for the services business thank you thank, thank you. you one last if oh, i may sorry, please I interrupt so uh, i would request you to please come back okay sure yeah thank thanks. you the next question is from the line of himanshu patel from o3 capital please go ahead yeah hi uh, good morning and congrats on good set of numbers I had a question on uh, our order books are increasing and even for our competitors are the pricing also improving in the market and because some of the peers are european based players okay so what is the pricing uh, happening are we seeing any improvement in the pricing you know the thing is that we've come off a extremely volatile uh, raw material base so uh, at which point in time you look at it and orders but in general you could say because the market is expanding margins are expanding you are right about that general principle um so 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 you that that is that is that is positive that is a positive thing about it but it is an intensely competitive market also at the same time uh okay. so so we, we do we do see uh, in general margins expanding because of of of, of the market expanding itself also given the fact that that different companies have different cycles of having absorbed the raw material cost increases or the revision of cost downwards okay and uh, one uh, question i had was uh, see in turbines we say that uh, refurbishment happens after a period of time okay or you 
at what point of time the company decides that it is time to buy a new turbine versus just getting it refurbished okay or uh, can can you just give some it depends on requirement yeah so you see the the product itself is a customized product and used by uh, by uh, operators in their own manner so really the wear and tear is dependent on a lot of inputs from the customer side itself and primarily amongst those is the operator uh, uh, use especially if this turbine is used in a extraction mode or a back pressure mode where the steam is or heat is provided to an industry uh, the the requirements both from a from a quality of water perspective lead to degradation of different parts there so you have different wear and tear that happens between different customers both based on industry as well as geography uh driven by different levels of automation etc so uh, the refurbishment cycle can be as quick as 1 year to 20 years uh, it is all unique and customized and depends on specific uh, um considerations our turbines itself are last to build or, or designed to build in excess of 40 years so they can last their rugged turbines so they have no problem but even in our own technology we ourselves are developing new blades the new blade parts which improve our efficiency by 3 4 5 6% percent over the previous generation and so you could even validate with our own install base to improve and replace rotors and and change blade parts to improve efficiency with a with a install base of maybe 5 5 years ago even okay and uh, one more thing on that epa turbine business okay what has been the progress uh, and uh, the path ahead on that product means if you can elaborate on that also so the path ahead is that this is a market segment this is a market segment that's newer to us and so we are building a, a inquiry book here and our order book we have received good orders we continue to uh, believe that we will receive good orders we are not a, the market is quite large so we think that uh, before we become a significant player there and and come into the line of uh, more intense competition we have a way to go in terms of our order booking here <clears throat> but it will grow uh, 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 at a very fast pace year over year <clears throat> but it won't contribute more than uh, 10% to turnover in uh, we let you know when it when it, when, it, when it contributes over 10% of turnover so right okay. now it's not there okay and uh, what are the new uh, server request to please come back in the queue okay thank you thank you the next question is from the line of alisha mahavla from envision capital please go ahead hi so good afternoon thank you for taking the question uh, so firstly i'd like an update on the capex that was announced last quarter i think the, uh, it was supposed, it was expected to come on stream this quarter yeah i'll i i'll have a ceo and executive director arun answer that uh good afternoon to you uh as regards the capex uh, the expansion at uh, our new plant that somtura is more or less complete and uh, some balance portion would be completed in october month itself uh there are there have been certain other acquisition as far as uh, land and uh, uh, equipment is concerned so most of the capex is now over there will be some balance in q3 that would happen and i would like to tell you that all of it has been put to use we there's no uh, uh, there's no fresh capex proposal so whatever the capex we had we, we is all we we're, we're doing uh, 80% of it is in fixed infrastructure and about 20% is in software and other yeah. uh, uh, other uh, it based uh, uh, capex yeah this is the capex that was done to increase the capacity to 200 to 50 top lines correct Yes, yes, ma'am, and uh, that's yeah. what I have said that it has been already put to the use. Uh, uh -huh. You would recall last year. Last year we had done uh, over hundred, hundred, hundred and ten turbines, and this year in the first half itself we have reached a figure around that. So the capacity, so so the building uh, of numbers in the current uh, financial year will be twice as compared to the last year, and we have further uh, space. to expand it with the current infrastructure that we have and as our vice chairman has told you earlier we are looking forward to around 300 turbines that can be built of various types and sizes okay sure 
and also uh, will it be possible to quantify how much of our growth uh, this quarter is attributable to the price hike that was taken in, in this quarter in the last uh, three four quarters? You know, every order is unique, so this, we don't have any list of standard price, so it's, it's not possible to to determine it that way. I think the 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 previous uh, caller had had mentioned in terms of margins, and I think that's the only way that you can say that we've seen an expansion in margins. Okay, sure. And you did mention earlier in the call that there is a uh, drop in domestic inquiry. Uh, is this only attributable because of uh, steep inflation in uh, in uh, in raw material costs or, or capex costs, or is it a general slowdown that now we're witnessing? And are we expecting this to come back in H2? Yeah, I think it will come back in H2. But I think you have to look at it more less on a quarterly basis and, and more on an annual basis. On an annual basis, you'll continue to see growth. Okay, sure. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Chirag Muchalla from Centrum Broking. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks uh, for the opportunity. So the question on is on the SADC order uh, of one billion that we had won. So anything of that order has been booked in Q2 as inflows? No, no inflows. In that, um, on, on Q2, we haven't booked any inflows. Okay. Okay. And sir, on the similar lines, are we exploring servicing of utility turbines in India as well in the near future? And if yes, then uh, what kind of incremental capabilities we will need to build for it? Uh, yeah, you, 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 those are, the capabilities are something that we already have. In India, there's a very funny market which works on references and pre-qualifications, etc. So these are things that we will already, that we will have in place. India is also a very competitive market, so we'd have to see how we enter into it, especially given the fact that we don't like assuming liabilities, uh, especially in these manners. Uh, state electricity boards are notorious in lack of transparency in the operation, so we'll have to see how we operate in that that market but uh, needless to say we have the capabilities uh, we have uh, uh, the capacity as well we have the knowledge uh, we have the references now and we just have to see how we approach the market and uh, build customer confidence to be able to execute okay but uh, so at least from the private sector plans any immediate plans to also uh, you know i mean uh, start exploring that market or uh, I mean probably not something over the next couple of years hello am I audible yes sir you're audible management members uh, please confirm if you're able to hear us Yes, we can hear you. Uh, uh, to answer your specific question, this is Sachin here. Uh, in terms of the private players uh, in the utility segment in India, uh, as our vice chairman mentioned, it's a, it's a very uh, fragmented and competitive marketplace here. So we have uh, we are going to be very selective in terms of the businesses that we will pursue where the risk is limited and there's much more transparency in doing business. Uh, as far as independent power producers go with uh, utility turbines, we are supplies of parts. So that's an area which we have been actively exploring. Services <clears throat> will be more in the medium term, but for the short term, we are looking more in terms of supplies of parts to <clears throat> the utility turbines for independent power producers in the private sector. I hope that is your question. Yeah, yeah, sure. Thanks. And on the 3200 megawatt space, the, in the last call, it was mentioned that we were successful in a thermal renewable project also, uh, which will be booked in Q2. So has that been booked or uh, that is yet to be booked? No, it's been booked. It's been booked. And okay. Good, good order, great reference, good technology application. Okay. So this is a different... It's very intense competition. So this is a different order from the one that you are mentioning from West Asia of the solid municipal waste incineration, right? Uh, you know, I don't fully recall what I said last time, but this is what we have booked in this quarter. Okay. So, uh, I, I, uh, so uh, for the 30 to 100 megawatt space, specifically in Q2, you know, how many units have been booked? Can that be, uh, I mean, uh, can that be given out? 
I want to take, you know, I started off uh, our conference call post our, our joint venture ending to give greater credibility uh, around uh, uh, the orders here, but we would like to stick away from giving individual order uh, until they're material, unless they're material. But regardless to say that, that we're getting good market traction here, we get good market participation, our inquiry levels in this space are going up, our customer references and our regard from customers is going up. And so therefore, we believe this will definitely add to, and is already adding to our order booking. And we'd like to then just look at the turbine market in terms of application rather than size over a period of time. Okay, sir. Okay. Thanks for your time, sir. Thank you. The Thank next you. question is from the line of Prolin Nandu from Goldfish Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi team. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Uh, just want to understand your after uh, sales business a little bit better. You mentioned that these are customized turbines and life cycle can depend on the usage. But as a thumb rule, let's say if a customer pays 100 rupees for the turbine, over the life cycle of the entire turbine, what could be the uh, uh, revenue that the customer will have to pay for the refurbishment, spare and service uh, element? What, about three times over a 20 year period. Okay, so, so you say 100 rupees is paid for turbine, 300 rupees that no, you like to sell out, right? Sorry, come again? Non-inflationary basis, okay, that, that's good enough. Three times, right? Yeah. Okay. And uh, just an addition, I mean, you, you talked a lot about the international after sales uh, market. In the uh, 0 to 30 megawatt in terms of the uh, turbine that we sell, we have a very high market share. Uh, do we have a similar or a higher market share in after sales in domestic market in 0 to 30 megawatt? Uh, my question, what I wanted to understand was that how are we uh, looking at the service or the after sale element of the turbines of our competitors? Can you help? Uh, share some strategies to yeah, yeah. Uh, cater to that market. Yeah. So, so actually, the the it's a very good question you bring up, and and as you you would see that uh, growth markets such as India, Southeast Asia, where the installed base is lower, that means that both Triveni reference sites as well as competitor reference sites are lower. The focus is always obviously going to be in terms of more product sales. Uh, in India, in specific, because really the expansion in the Indian market in terms of captive power generation really only picked up post-2003 Electricity Act. Uh, the Rainey's market share and installed base is, is uh, a preeminent uh, market base here. And of course, uh, uh, ma majority of our market base is catered to by ourselves only. Uh, those customers who don't buy their aftermarket services from us uh, are, are not buying it from a competitor. They're, pretty much fabricating it in, 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 a, in a very rudimentary manner. So those are not type of customers that we would like to sell to anyway because the, there's no price and margin there in, in any case. Uh, on the international side, as you rightly say, the installed base of our competitors is far larger and our focus would be to, to incrementally take share from those uh, OEMs who are largely no longer participating in this space. Um, or have or are very expensive. So, and but this is dependent on giving uh, credibility to our customers in terms of having on the ground presence and capabilities. And to that extent, as we build out our international capabilities and on the ground presence, uh, we would see greater degree of customer confidence. So we have uh, received uh, uh, numerous orders in this uh, in this past quarter only from our competitors from, from clients for competitor turbines, and these range from uh, uh, utility turbines of 660 megawatts to uh, uh, combined cycle application turbines of uh, uh, 60 plus megawatts of our competitors. And uh, so we think that uh, it's very difficult to, this is more a question of effort in market and making sure that our presence is there and then continuously selling. We know our capabilities are high and that our cost structure allows us to be extremely competitively priced for the customer. Uh, again, as Sachin has said, that this is a key area of growth for us going forward. Sure. Just a follow on to that would be, uh, I mean, uh, let's say in some of the international market where you need uh, some people on the ground, uh, does it mean that initially we will have to probably invest and then uh, it does not make sense to probably compare our after sales uh, margins that we have done historically because of this investment phase? And maybe in some of these key countries, we will have to probably put that feet on feet. So 
would it be slightly margin valuable at least in the short term is that a right way to look at it no no not not at all actually because this is a, we're not a capex heavy com- company anyway our, sure. our capabilities are people and people. so very frankly to expansion into markets is a is a hr uh, uh, constraint as as well as a question uh to that extent like i start off in my initial remarks we i have a a a, a very ambitious and aggressive uh, um hiring plan and uh, so we are looking for capable managers we are looking for capable competent uh, uh managers at all different levels business managers uh technical and engineering managers service support staff uh, supply chain people and so we're looking to expand operations while of course keeping in mind the fact that uh, that we will continuously look to uh, to contain uh, employee cost as a percentage of turnover great thanks a lot for this thank you the next question is from the line of harshit patel from individual investor please go ahead uh, hi sir uh, this is harshit from equivalent security uh, good afternoon Uh, sir my first question is on the euro as you have highlighted rightly that europe is going for energy security and that might open up a lot of prospects for us so sir, could you give us some flavor on the european market as a whole as to how large is the market what is the structure of the competition over there as to what would be the market share of top 3 4 large mnc players which are the tier 2 players and where do we stand in this overall scheme of things and lastly uh, on the similar line what would be the difference in pricing between these players as to how much premium would the tier 1 players would be charging and where are we in this whole structure that would be my first question no no uh, so so th- thank you you know very detailed questions uh, unfortunately i don't think i would be able to give you answers on the pricing levels but obviously you would understand that that uh, a price quoted to a customer and accepted by a customer means that uh, other people were uh, uh, higher or lower to that we as sivini don't do orders based on price uh, our biggest issue in the international market is a question of visibility as we can expand our visibility to the greatest extent which is an indication through our inquiries the chances of our success are higher um in 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 general uh, uh europe is going through its its energy transition and its requirements are specifically catered around uh, uh thermal renewable solutions only or district heating as a matter uh the, the the so and typically from a competitive viewpoint europe has had the largest number of incumbent oems but they also have the largest number of, of oems that have gone out of business or sold out also uh and and so the competitive nature of the market in europe is the highest uh we find that uh, uh that d- despite the fact that it is a competitive market uh you have uh, 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 uh very healthy margins i think for all manufacturers uh the market not only in europe but globally is dominated by siemens so siemens is by far the largest player in all market segments in all markets uh, especially if you look at it from a global or regional perspective and uh, and so they are the they are the dominant player and uh, the rest would fall below including us um so so we are there now we, what you have what you must keep in mind is the fact that that the amount of inquiries that we see from europe are pretty much the same number of inquiries that we see from southeast asia but southeast asia provides a different uh, application to those uh, to, to the requirement uh, there's more uh, industrial capex and fixed capital formation happening in southeast asia uh in as, as well as africa um than would be happening in places like europe so sure. understood uh, so my uh, second question uh, would be on the geographical split of our overall international revenues so if not the exact numbers but if you can give a broad split as to uh, what is the percentage of international revenues that we are getting from each of these geographies europe southeast asia west asia latin america and so on and so forth that would be my last question oh thanks you know i think firstly i don't have this information on me but i don't know how material it is to you given the fact that like i said we sell in over 110 different countries and uh, very frankly the, the economic climate between india and bangladesh and pakistan is not the same so getting it on a regional basis apart from europe is not really constructive but having said that uh, our order book 
like I said, is, is based on two applications. One is industrial heat and power application, and the other is renewable energy based power requirements. Now you could tell from areas that where, wherever the installed capacity or size of economy is larger, that will obviously be larger markets for us. So Indonesia is always going to be a larger market than Singapore. You know, uh, that's just obvious. Uh, Indonesia is also going to be a larger market for us than Thailand. Uh, and Thailand is going to be a larger market for us than Vietnam. These are just consequences of markets. And so uh, uh, very frankly, we participate in the growth of those markets and their energy transition as well. Right, understood. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for taking my question. Thank you. Participants, if you wish to ask any questions, please send a star and one. The next question is a follow-up from Prolin Nandu from Goldfish Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, sir. Thanks again for giving me this opportunity. You mentioned that uh, you are also always upgrading and there is this whole element of 3 to 5 percent, 3 to 6 percent uh, improvement in yield and that also form, is forming a decent part of your order book. For a customer, what could be the break even uh, uh, to probably upgrade, right, if there is an improvement of in, a yield of let's say 5 percent? Is it like what could be the payback period for that kind of a, a, a replacement? Yeah, it all depends on cost of capital, but uh, as you would imagine, and, and cost of capital and the, the price of your fuel. So uh, what we've seen, uh, not, and this has been a large driver of, of, of growth for us, both on the product as well as aftermarket size, is, is the fact that raw material uh, of fuel prices, be it biomass, coal, uh, or even notional cost of heat has gone up considerably in terms of calculation. And so the, the paybacks are very, very quick. But uh, uh, I would I would say that for a five percent efficiency upgrade at a, at a twelve percent cost of capital uh, um, should give you a payback somewhere in the region of about uh, three years, three and a half years. Perfect, understood. Right, right. Cool. Thanks a lot. Thank you for this. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kadeja mm -hmm. Mantri from Sher Khan. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Am I audible? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Uh, yeah. So, so, first question is uh, that in the results, we have uh, uh, had a special mention of some 11.4 crore of expenses towards execution and maintenance uh, uh, expenses uh, in the SAD region, SADC region. So, was it a one off or we are clarifying because we did not book any revenue uh, for this order in Q2? No, no, there was revenue. The expenses of it were not directly incurred by us, and so therefore it's formed a part of uh, uh, other expenses. We had uh, alluded to this in our previous conference call, as well as this conference call, as the fact that there will be further revenue coming on this uh, on, in this bucket, and to expect that in both not only this current uh, financial year but the coming financial year as well. Okay. And so, uh, when we say that uh, better product mix would lead to uh, improvement in margins, so what would be the ideal product mix for Trivendi turbine, uh, which uh, would uh, which which uh, which we can uh, which can lead to like you know 100 to 200 basis points improvement in margin from current levels of 19 percent? I'm talking about operating margin. Oh no, I mean I I think the fact is that it is a dynamic market. Of course, the fact is that. Uh, 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 we could expand our margins tomorrow to 20% or 25% if necessary. We just have to re refuse certain orders. Uh, um, the, 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 the thing is that the domestic market is always more competitive. Uh, market share, we aim to maintain a, a good market share, a dominant market share in the Indian market uh, as, as the strategy. And the fact that we consider it to, be, to grow the domestic market, we, as well as our international market growing, we believe that in the, uh, in the in the medium term we'll have a 50 50 percent product uh, 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 both international and domestic uh, 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 revenue share so that is one thing that that will that will stabilize uh, margins the next part is uh, on the aftermarket versus product uh, product mix I mean, not, I mean the the revenue mix um, where currently you have the 24 percent of turnover for this current quarter uh, the previous quarter previous financial year, or oh, sorry, the last the Q2 of FY22 was at 27%. So you can see why there, there's a margin difference because of the average the average margins that you would get in the aftermarket segment are considerably uh, higher than what would be from the product. What we aim is, uh, again, in the short term, is that we would incrementally grow our percentage aftermarket to sales as well. Uh, 
this will be difficult given the fact that we have an extremely high growth rate on the product side. So this is something that we'll have to try. That will be a challenge for us in the in the uh, in the in the coming quarters is to maintain the growth rate. And Sachin has already spoken about the fact that it's already grown quite considerably from an order booking perspective and then therefore execution. And we will aim that this will continue to grow even fa faster. So we should have a, a, a higher uh, aftermarket as a percentage of sales figure uh, than the previous year. Uh, this all gives us confidence in the fact that ultimately we have a yielding revenue from our aftermarket and something that we think uh, holds us in very good stead uh, for years to come. Okay, sir. Fine. Thank you. A reminder to the participants, if you wish to ask Thank any you. questions, please enter star and one. As there are no further questions, I now hand the conference over to management for closing comments. Uh, uh, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we're very uh, pleased with where we've ended up with Q2 FY23 as well as H1 FY23. We have full confidence that H2 is going to be considerably better than H1, uh, and FY24 is going to be much better than FY23. Uh, so we look forward to your participating in our growth journey. Uh, both Arun and I, uh, thank you for being on this call. Thank you. On behalf of Tumini Turbine Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.